Hey folks, Jonathan here. All right, just want to give you an update on the trucks and uh, we're going to do an evaluation on the Frick steam engine today just because of inquiring minds want to know and my mind is inquiring. So here's the DT-466 that runs so good. Now I did go down there and put a battery in it and it rolled over about twice and started right up. First time I'd ever started it with a battery. I just pulled it off when I got it because it was behind the wrecker and then uh, of course pulled it off again the other day because it was easiest but uh anyway uh no issues at all besides this thing being dirty from the chicken litter chicken crap whatever you want to call it so i didn't realize this was an air-conditioned cab too but par for the course for the guy that used to own this he would have never used it uh he was a, a tough old vietnam vet that uh owned some chicken houses and uh actually was the first employer Besides the you know me and my record service, but it was the first outside employer of my son and uh, He was a good friend of mine I wanted him to go to work for him because I knew that if he worked for him and he could handle it He could handle anybody because he was a tough one uh, If you ask him for a hammer he'd throw it to you and He'd hit you in the head if you wasn't careful. He was just a tough one and uh, uh, You know just he was something else a good fella passed away a few years back some of you may remember the uh, 1941 Chevrolet that I picked up out of a field one time. And uh, I had asked him about that car and he gave it to me. So he was he was a good guy. And uh, I miss him, just like a, a bunch of the other ones. But I think uh, they may be in a better place than we are. I'm sure they are. But anyway, so what we got, uh, no real issues here. I did pressure wash some toward the back to get some of that chicken litter off so I could... Uh, try to get to it but that's what all this is that's just uh build up chicken crap it's not grease and oil uh, and it's everywhere but we got most of it off or a lot of it off so we'll probably pressure wash again once we get the engine out and uh try to get something on it because that stuff will make everything in this brother rust uh it about rust plastic that's how bad it is so let me see pto's off no the pto's still on the hydraulic pumps off getting ready to pull the drive shaft got a couple more bolts for the bell housing stuff got the motor mounts bolts on the front out uh of course there's a lot of differences between these two engines i'm noticing more and more as i go but that's okay we're going to figure it out uh the other one's got a bigger turbo and i thought it was kind of funny because i told my son i said well i'll just swap the turbos out i mean you know go ahead and swap the whole manifold out and the turbo it redirects that pipe a little bit and i think they've done that because they didn't want the oil cooler or the oil filters to get hot but uh my son said no i don't think i'd do that dad and you know that was kind of made me proud because uh for years and years and years you know how young folks are just like i was myself it was always update change make more power all that and his thinking was is uh the original turbo smaller less boost gonna last a lot longer uh and he's finally in that stage to where he understands that because I tried to pound it and he said when he's younger, but you know, he, he wanted to do the, you know, cut the exhaust off his, you know, newer truck and uh, do a leveling kit that actually throw the alignment off. Uh, just uh, stuff like that, that's just normal for all of us. I mean, we all went through that, but uh, as you get older, you realize that the engineers that built this stuff, you know, got paid pretty good money to do a, a pretty good engineering and uh, you know it all works together like it is and you start changing stuff and then you start having problems you know if you want to tear a transmission out of a uh a ford uh diesel truck just go ahead and put a tuner on it and get more horsepower out of the engine and then you'll you'll teach the transmission that uh it, it ain't strong enough to handle it so and it's that way with everything uh maybe not an allison because they are tough but anyway all the other ones but uh but yeah I've, i'm a firm believer in they sure done a good job making it stock so uh, most of them so anyway i will show you what we figured out is wrong with the other truck and there you go you can see i'm using my new old wrecker with the flat tires uh that just that keeps me from having to chalk the wheel because mercy brake don't work yard truck i've got some to put on it i just haven't done it yet uh there's our culprit oil cooler bad uh it was bad i poured what i done I don't know if I got it on video or not, but I poured oil in here. I'm sorry, I poured gas in here on both ends and watched it leak out. So we know for sure that that's the issue. 
or, or one of the issues there could be more so I have just decided that uh, I'm gonna change it just because that other one runs so much better and uh, there's no use beating on well not necessarily a dead horse but uh, beating on a horse that's injured and so we're just gonna get it in there and we'll figure out we'll do whatever we got to do to get the transmission hooked up the exhaust like I said is uh, a little different so we'll do some changing on that uh, front motor mouse different everything so far is pretty much different I did order the new radiator which is a shorter version this is not to me I didn't like when they done this uh, some people may like it some people won't this is the radiator this is the charge cooler or the intercooler whatever you want to call it for the turbo uh, there's not much radiator in this truck and it really has always bothered me I had a 95 uh, 73 truck that was that way. I still got one, matter of fact, uh, the wrecker, the one that we went up to Boykins with, and I just, I just don't like that narrow radiator. Never did, never will. Uh, it's the way it is. So, I ordered an aluminum radiator that is made for the IC bus, which is shorter. So when we put it in, uh, this is intercooled. The other engine is not intercooled. So there's no intercooler at all on it. There, none of this piping's on it. We're gonna do away with this piping. I know a lot of people's gonna say it'd be better intercooled, and I know it would be. A little bit more power. I don't need no more power. I need a good, dependable, solid truck. We're gonna have a power steering pump right here in the way anyway. So just because it's gonna be a belt driven. The reason that was shaking, there was two bolts out of it. So, you know, we figured that out. I hope they're not broke. I didn't look in the holes. It's full of chicken manure. But, uh, so what we'll end up doing is Shortening this top up, re-angling these down, uh, getting our new radiator in, and everything else will stay all the same. The front end goes on the same. It's just that the front curves lower here in the in comes down lower, and it's a newer. It's the IC front, so it's actually the conversion front between these old model internationals and the next generation newer model. And uh, they only used them in like 02. I think they built them in 02 and they sold them in 02 and 03 or something like that. So that's the plan for that. But anyway, the oil cooler went down here. Uh, I figure they want $200 for an oil cooler. I've got some on 7.3s, but who's to say they're worth a crap? Uh, I'm not going to spend 200 or more dollars on an intercooler for an engine that I've already spent enough. Uh, I'm almost three times what I have in that other engine and the other engine runs good. So I think we're going to go on and get this thing swapped out so that's the plan and uh we're going to let's go down here to the Bates engine and i'll show you what the plans are so for everybody that hates the steam engine videos they can you go ahead and click off now because everything else is going to be steam all right okay we're going to start by figuring out all everything that's missing on this engine uh which is plenty but so we are missing the entire bearing for the crank pin and i don't know what size it is probably three inch crank pin i'd have to go over and measure it but uh, two bearing halves, a couple wedges, and a bolt that goes through. Can be built. It's not a problem. We can build it out of uh, scrap material, melt some stuff down, pour some ingots, machine it out. Uh, they're they're going to be brass or bronze bronze inserts. So we can do that. That's not a problem. That's uh, one thing that they they lost when they took the engine apart. All right. So our other thing. Well, let's get to the things that are missing first here. We are missing all of the linkage, all of this linkage. So the turnbuckles or whatever you want to call them for the ends, which I had to make on the baits, are missing. Uh, for the exhaust at the bottom and the two intakes at the top. Uh, the inner ones are missing. There's pins sticking out. Uh, not sure what these looked like or how they were made. Still trying to find pictures. I didn't realize that a Frick cordis is as rare as it is. So anyway, that's uh, pretty much the main thing here that's missing besides the rod that goes from here back to here and from here to the eccentric and the eccentric is missing. So all that stuff we can build. There's two rods missing going to the governor. Someone's already started replacing some pieces on it, probably just for looks, but uh, that's minor stuff that we can do later. Uh, and the governor balls and stuff but the gear the gear setup still there and everything that's the important parts are still there and i've actually got some extra uh 
They're actually 18 pound balls for it. You can buy shot put balls 18 pound, they're five inch and they're the right size for these cordless engines. So I'm sure the valves are stuck really good. Our main concern on this entire engine, besides the farts missing, and like I said, we can build everything that's missing. All right, one of the good things, let's go back to the other side. Okay, I'll show you one of the good things and I'll show you a bad thing. One of the good things is, is this thing is just about at bottom dead center, uh, which is a good thing. It's 36 inch stroke. I'd have to measure to see exactly how far down it is, but it's just about down to the bottom. So that means if we pull the head off the top side, we should be able to know the condition of the cylinder pretty good. Now the bad part is, is this was open and I don't know if that one's opened or it's probably open in there. Yeah, it's open right into the cylinder and this thing's probably got that ugly dirty insulation in it just like that other one had it does could be asbestos or something i didn't eat it or breathe it so i'm good uh so anyway what it comes down to is is uh we don't know what's been in there how much water's been in but since the piston's down if i pull the head we'll be able to know a lot about it uh the, the you have to take these caps off on this end to do the timing marks the timing marks are actually behind them so and these has got, the, I think these are the push outs. Pretty sure to push these off because sometimes they're hard to get off. And I'm sure that's what it is because some are missing, some are not. But uh, anyway, I'm not too worried about that as much. Uh, there's probably going to be more rust in the bottom. I don't know if that valve will stay closed its whole life. Now that valve will seal it off absolutely 100% if it's closed. But if it got open, then we got a problem. Uh, let me see, there's a crack across there, but that is not a head. And this is actually a repair, which I don't mind seeing. I kind of like some of these old repairs. And I say that's old because it's square, it's got square nuts on it. So we're gonna take this center bolt off and this is a cover that comes off and then take all the head bolts off around it. I think that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. And hopefully we can maybe figure out uh, how bad it is. That should tell us everything we need to know. I don't think we need to take anything else off besides that to figure it out. So that's going to be a pretty important part of the puzzle. The good part on a cordless, anything that was in there water-wise should have run down into the exhaust valve and uh, maybe left there. So we will see about that. Uh, I don't know. I'd love to see the engine run again. I think it would be great to have it running again. I don't know how many years it's been. I know it's been a long time, but... Uh, and the green paint was done, I'm sure, later because everything that was painted, well, I can show you. There's no, there hasn't been a bearing inside there since it's been painted. So this thing was painted probably after uh, Hank Snow had brought it to the museum and set it up. And it probably looked pretty good when he'd first done it. And, uh, but he really didn't have it set up for running. Then were uh, cinder blocks that was on, then were not. That's what this concrete foundation. He just concreted it in, had concrete on top somehow. Uh, but anyway, all right, let's get some tools and see if we can get that head off, and that'll tell us the, the whole story of this end. All right, folks, a couple things about this that's bothering me. So as you can see, the studs don't stick out very far. It was torqued pretty good, but it was not, not like I think it should have been torqued. And I should have to pull the head off through here, but it's loose. That don't make much sense to me, and it feels light. I don't understand it. So we're going to get that out of there, or off of there. Let's see what we've got going on. Okay. Huh. Alright, first off, there's the head. Uh, I don't know why the studs just don't seem like they're long enough, but everything else is fine. Can you believe that somebody done my thing? Uh, that's grease. I wonder if uh, 
Hank done that to save this engine. I don't have a light on me, but uh, I'm going to get a light and we're going to shine it in there. But that's pure grease is what that is. Yeah. Daggone. Looks like we might have got lucky again. Let's see what we can get. I'm going to get a measuring tape too because that bearing thing says 12 by... That looks like 10 inch bore, but maybe it is 12. I don't know. Let's uh, let's get a measuring tape and a light so we can see this cylinder. Uh, piston, yeah, it looks like it's down there. All right, let's uh, we'll see what we figure out. Well, first off, yes, it is 12. I guess I'm so used to looking at uh, them big engines that uh, that piston just looks small. So one thing I noticed is this big recess in the head. And uh, of course, this is a heavy head, but it's not as heavy. It's not nearly as heavy as the other ones, the 14-inch floors. Uh, let me see. All right, so you can see that uh, we got oil and grease on the bottom. Uh, a few animals, bees. There's some more animals. Uh, you can see the nut on the end of the piston, which is what I like to do with them, but a lot of them don't have it. That's why it's got a recess. And you can see some surface rust up about halfway and above. and uh, It might be a little tiny bit of pitting, but nothing major. Uh, this engine would run fine with that. And from looking at this, that valve is going to be just fine. Uh, it's oily. Let's look at the up top here. I can't see it really. I can't see up and see inside the valve, but yeah, I feel it now. There's no rust on it either. So I would be really surprised if these uh, if these are actually really stuck or stuck bad when it comes to the valves. So yeah, this is another good engine that would be easy to get running. Uh, you know, it goes right back to it's a shame there's parts missing because if there weren't parts missing, it wouldn't take too long to have this thing set up and running. But with the parts missing, that is the problem. And uh, as you can see, it's been rained in plenty of times, but this valve is what keeps that from happening, keeps it from getting bad in there. So we'll take them nuts off. I don't know what it is about all of these studs being shorter than what they should be. Uh, a lot of them are like that for some reason. Uh, these head studs need to be either backed out some or something needs done. Longer studs. Yeah, I don't. I just don't like it. I think that uh, you should be getting at least a, the full nut of uh, thread. And if you look at some of these, they wasn't getting half the nut. So, all right. Well, there you go. We evaluated. I think it'll be fine. Uh, just got to get a lot of stuff freed up. Uh, there's timing marks on here. Uh, I can see one on this one. I'm not seeing it on the other. There should be a mark here. Someone could have bolted that on wrong, too. I don't see a mark. Well, maybe there is a mark. Yeah, I'd have to clean it up good just to make sure, but I'm not seeing a mark anywhere. But this should be straight up and down. Uh, and then you set the marks on the other, and then you set up all your rods. I don't see it being a hard to do. Okay, so that's what held them on. Looks like we might have had a washer with a bolt. That had that held the uh, turnbuckle on or uh, clevis, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so, if we got everything freed up and built that stuff, uh, the eccentric and these rods, and then the bearing would be about it to make it run. And then uh, somebody has welded these on here, so these should have had two holes in it, and this turns the other way and operates. And uh, let me see. It's surprising there's actually parts laying here. Somebody's done some work on it. I've got some more pieces that look like maybe they was messing with it. Hopefully the gear's down in the bottom and this turns and turns the uh, the gear up. Uh, you know, for for show, visual, it'd be nice to have a governor on it. It's not a necessity to run it. And, you know, my goals are more of getting them running and then slowly working them into... Uh, being complete uh, someone has changed these bolts so he may have done that when they moved it or something I don't know that shouldn't that should be studs with nuts 
that shouldn't have bolts in it. Uh, somebody's definitely done that. And uh, I guess it'll work fine. And I don't know. You know, I don't know how far to even take it down. I, it's one of them deals where, I mean, the rod has got rust, but it's not really pitted. You see a lot of the rust that's falling off. You know, I could probably clean that rod up enough to run. Well, I know it could, but we may do that and uh, end up maybe putting this thing together just to run. So the other two should be set up this winter, the Hamilton and the other baits should be on foundations this winter. And uh, we got the Erie on foundation. Been lapping on the valve on it. And uh, some of you might have seen the little short on it. More videos coming out for uh, Rex. I've already got quite a few videoed. I've got, uh, I've actually got one uploaded I need to post. I've got, uh, I've got plenty of that to do. You know, plenty of the Rex. Uh, the only reason I'm able to do it is because of that the lid cam, the camera, and I know the volume's crap. I know my breathing's crap. Uh, it's not a big deal, so if you want to watch them, that's great. If you don't, you know, all you got to do is just not click on them. But anyway, all right, here's the studs we broke on this thing. So them was going to be fun to get out. That done it. I think when the crank swung around or something, uh, it happens. Uh, honestly, if that's all we broke, we done a really good job because uh, I think that's what happened to most of these engines when they got moved. Uh, it's my understanding that you know, and you, they didn't have the equipment as good as I've got, and that's you know that's saying something because I don't have the, the best or correct equipment to be moving it out in the field for sure. So uh, I see somebody has pipe wrench that. So this valve will have to come off before I do anything. I wouldn't open that valve up and let anything that's in there go into the engine. Uh, steam chest on top, steam chest on bottom, and it don't connect from top to bottom. So the exhaust is the bottom side. And, uh, anyway, I'm really impressed with it, so I'll get it back on there and get it tightened up. And, you know, it, it'll be in the line of uh, setting up one time for later on. All right. Appreciate everybody watching. Until next time. Bye.